In this video, I want to look at some of the problematic things that we've got to consider when we're looking at chat GPT. Now, the first question I've asked here, uh, ego aside, can you give me information on Phil Bradley? And it's come back and said, well, I'm not really sure who this, this person is. When I asked the question the other day, it very quickly came back and he gave me an answer and it was specifically related to me. So already the answers that we're getting from chat GPT are changing and there's a lack of consistency in the kind of information that we're getting. We're also getting a lack of consistency with the kind of responses that we get from the system. But we can ask the question one day and get one answer, ask exactly the same question the next day and get a completely different answer. So that's an issue that uh, needs to be addressed. Because it's pulling content from so many different places, inevitably we're going to get very different answers. And because the whole process uh, by which it gives us information is based on a, a, a language learning model, then inevitably we don't get data being presented back to us in the same way. And I think as a result of that, we can't really rely on it in the way that we can do with other resources. Having said that, it's perfectly uh, true to say that if you go and search any of the other search engines that are out there, again, you're going to get different results whenever you're asking the question. Particularly if you're using something like Google, we can both ask exactly the same question of Google and get two very different answers. So that doesn't mean that it's better or worse than any search engine that's out there. It's something, however, that we do need to be aware of. Anyway, I continue. Uh, so I've asked now for information on Phil Bradley, the internet consultant and author. And it's given me um, a, a brief potted uh, biography here. It says I'm a consultant and an author specializing in search engine optimization, social media and online research. Immediately there's a problem here because I don't do search engine optimization. Um, I did very briefly many years ago, but I, I don't do that. That's not an area of specialism that I've got. It also says that I've written several books on the topic, including The Complete Guide to Google and Google Power Unleash the Full Potential of Google. Complete nonsense. I have not written any books on anything like that. Yes, I have written books, but not those titles. Chat GPT has completely made them up. They may exist, and indeed when I asked the question previously, it did come up with another book that it thought that I had read, uh, and that I had written, but Again, it's, it's, it hasn't done so. Uh, I haven't done that. There's, it's being referred to as hallucinations. Chat GPT is giving us hallucinations. It, it, the way in which it has been trained is that it prefers to give more verbose answers than shorter, more succinct answers to the questions that we ask it. And it will just pull stuff out of thin air if it feels that it can do. So you cannot trust the content that you're getting. We don't know where that content is coming from. If you're using a traditional search engine, you can see the websites where, where um, you can go to to get the actual data that you want. But in a situation like this, because of the way in which the data has been packaged for me, I'm not getting that information in the way that I, I ideally would like to be able to have it. So it's, it's kind of like the chat GPT tool itself is acting like a gatekeeper and it's not, not letting me get access to the sources of the information. So I've then got to, to wonder, well, where is it getting that content and that data from? Can I trust the resources? And so we've got this now this concern about can we trust the data? Do we have to trust the morals and the ethics of what's essentially a commercial organization? And quite frankly, I don't think that we can do at the moment. Um, we've got a long way to go and you cannot trust the data that you get back. I've seen people talking about using children, uh, using it to write essays. Uh, you cannot do so because you cannot trust this tool. It's simply an untrustworthy, unreliable, incorrect way of getting data. And the stuff that gets produced for you might be okay, but I, I doubt it. I really do at this stage. 
That doesn't mean we shouldn't use it. That doesn't mean we shouldn't understand how it works. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't play with it, but we certainly shouldn't be trusting it at the moment. But again, another point that's worthwhile making here is this is as bad as it's going to get. With the further training that it gets, with the large databases that it gets trained on in the future, it is going to be much better. So I think this is only a, a query and a, a worry that we've got at this stage in the process. I've asked uh, again a little bit further here, can you give me some academic, uh, academic citations on the particular subject? Um, and it's now said that it can't. And so there are, are again limitations that you'll find with chat GPT. It does quite often just come to a screeching halt and it says well no I can't do that for you and so what you've then got to try and do is to think well how can I rephrase my question to get the actual information out of it that I want and that's where you get stuff that's called prompt engineering to make sure that you can provide it with the prompt that will give the information that you need. So There, there are times when it just flatly refuses to do any work at all that we want it to even with a very straightforward very specific query um, like that one. There are plenty of limitations that we've got with chat GPT but again you know I'll, I'll, I'll end by saying it's not something that we shouldn't use we just need to be aware of it and we need to understand it well enough so that we can tell people patrons users and so on that this is not at the moment a trustworthy tool.